Hey there, Jake Miller here with you again from the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. In this video, this is video number two about uh, quizzes, which is a wonderful tool for formative assessment and review in your classrooms. In video one of this series, I talked about how to create this quiz that we see on our screen right now. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to run this synchronously with your class. In the next video, video three, we'll talk about how to run an asynchronously, kind of like a homework assignment or a, a practice assignment for your students to work on. So if you didn't watch video one, one where I created it, you might want to go back and do that. Here, we're just going to talk about the quiz experience itself. Okay, so here I am in my quiz. And again, the way I can get back to that quiz, let's say I'm at my quizzes homepage. The way I can get back to my quiz is go to my library and it should be right there at the top. Or if it's not the top, I could, I could find it uh, by scrolling down through it. So that's the quiz I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Okay, I can make edits to it if I want to. Here, I'm actually just gonna launch it. So I have two options, a live quiz or homework. In this session or this video, we're doing live quizzes. I could choose between classic or instructor pace. Let's do classic for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Okay, when I'm in a classic quiz, I see three options, either team mode, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, but it looks pretty much like classic mode, except the students get a score together as they go through it. Participants answer at their own pace, but their scores are grouped. So the student's experience isn't really that different. It just adds in the team feel, which kids do enjoy. Classic mode is what I normally run, and which is what we'll run here. And then there's test mode, and test mode just takes out some of the frills, as it says there. It says, no frills mode that's ideal for conducting a serious assessment. So if you want to assess your students on what you've got in this quiz is, there is an option to be able to do that here. Takes the timer out, takes all kinds of things like that out, and just focuses them on the assessment itself. Okay, but we're gonna do classic mode. Underneath classic mode, the first option is, do I want to assign it to a class? Now there's pros and cons to that. The pro, and this means for most students uh, or most teachers attaching it to Google Classroom. You could also attach it to classes from other uh, different LMSs here too. I use it with Google Classroom. The thing I like about it is then it automatically lists all of my students and I could see if somebody didn't do the quiz, which I teach eighth grade, so it's possible that some of the kids didn't participate. So that is a nice feature. It lists the kids and say they never never attempted. Uh, the downside is it automatically sends the grades to Google Classroom and it kind of litters up your Google Classroom screen with a lot of different assignments in there. So and that, that could be okay with you and that might not be something you like. Who knows? It's up to you. I just want you to be aware it's going to send the grades to Classroom. It's going to post an assignment in Classroom. Uh, but the pro is it's going to show automatically your kids there. and It's a nice way to get them to the link. It's, it's, a, it's an option you could use. I'm not going to use it here, but you could. Underneath here in the general settings, under participant attempts, I could set it to unlimited or require them only a certain number of attempts. Uh, I typically do unlimited because if my kids want to try it twice, I'm always up for that. Okay, name factory is if for if you want your kids to get a randomized name in there. That's for if you're having problems with your kids typing in appropriate names. I don't have problems with that. You know, maybe they'll add a exclamation point after their name or something like that. But otherwise, they, they, they need me to know who they are. So generally, they're okay with what they put in there. Uh, underneath there, do I want the kids to see the answers during the activity? I typically have that on because I want the kids, to, I want that self-assessment piece to be happening there. That's how they learn, in my opinion. Uh, or I could change it to turn that off or only validating, only telling them, uh, only checking to see if it's correct, but not showing them the correct answers if they're incorrect. Okay, below there, do I want them to see the answers after the activity or not? And I normally leave that on as well because I want them to be able to review from it. Uh, but I could turn it off or I could just show them just the questions afterwards, but not the answers. Okay, I normally leave them both on. That's your call. Adaptive learning, we talked about briefly in the first video in this series. Uh, we'll click the See How It Works button and see a little bit about it down here in the corner. It says, make reattempts meaningful and prevent copying. It says, our adaptive algorithm creates a unique set of questions for each student, focusing more on previously incorrect and unseen questions for more meaningful learning with every attempt. To me, this is only really functional if you have a larger question set and you're gonna use it repeatedly. But if you're in that situation, it's a really great feature to be able to use. For this situation, I only have nine questions in my quiz, so I'm going to leave uh, adaptive question make mode off. But if you have a large set of questions and you're gonna use it regularly throughout the year, I think it's a great feature. 
Below that is power-ups. This just adds uh, special little bonus points and fun things into the game. I normally leave it on because the kids enjoy that. Uh, underneath that is timer. We talked about how in the other video you could either have the timer on uh, based on the time settings that are in your questions or turn it off. I normally leave it on when we're playing it for fun and turn it off if I'm doing this as a true formative assessment uh, and I'm telling the kids I'm doing it as a formative assessment. Normally I leave it on, but it is an option to turn it off. Notice, by the way, down here I can make it a test timer for a a more formal testing experience that's not an option in the free version the leaderboard i normally leave this on uh, the leaderboard shows on the teacher screen so i normally project that and make sure i'm only showing the top five and i'll show you that later and it also shows on the student screen their rank as they play through it doesn't show necessarily the entire leaderboard but it shows how they compare to kids kind of around them in score Okay, below that is shuffle questions, which I normally leave off, but you could leave it on, or you could you could have it shuffle. Uh, up to you whether you want them to be in a random order or not. Let's, let's say we want them shuffled. And the important one is shuffle answer options. You remember in video one, I said that I typically just put the first answer as the correct one, and then I have this on to shuffle them. Okay, redemption questions. I love this feature, and it gives the kids a few attempts at incorrect questions. So if they only missed two or three, uh, they might get a chance to fix them. If they missed like ten, then they'll only get a chance to fix two or three. But it does give them some questions they could reattempt, which as a as a learning thing, I love. Sometimes if it's a formative assessment, I might leave that off though. Uh, and again, they're going to know hopefully the correct answer because you let it show it to them up above. So that's a consideration you have to make. Below here is do you want it to show memes after every question? Uh, I normally leave this on. The kids get a kick out of it. Some of the kids don't, and they just skip quickly past them. I made my own meme set here that has has um, pictures of me in there. I think it, the kids get a kick out of it, so I leave that on. Or you could use ones that are available in here. Uh, it's also possible maybe to have your kids send you pictures to put in there and you make the memes uh, based on a, a set of uh, images the kids sent to you. It could be really fun to have your own class created set. I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And now here's my live quiz all ready to go. Okay. And I can see uh, that I've got um, a link that I can give them, a code that I can give to my students or I can give them a link to get in, or I could post it to Classroom, or Teams, or it looks like uh, Canvas is part of the paid version, or Schoology, or let's see what's on, what else is underneath here. Twitter as well. I don't know why I'd want to administer my quizzes on Twitter, but I could. <laughs> and here's that link I could share out there. And then as soon as students join, they'll appear right here. The student gets a choice as to whether they want the music on. I think it's obnoxious. Whether they want the sound effects on, if they want to see the memes, and if they want it read aloud to them. Okay, the read aloud feature is really nice as a UDL thing. Remember, we can't add audio in the free version, but the students can put read aloud on. I'm going to leave it off in this version, but it's nice that that option's there. I'm going to go ahead and click start, and you see from the teacher screen that I'm in there over there. Now, I'm also going to log in from my phone. One note while I do that is that in quizzes, you the students don't have to move at the same rate. So as long as the student makes it in before the quiz is over, uh, they'll have access into the quiz. So you can have them joining at different times. I could start this game before this kid starts. I'm going to go ahead and join with my name as um, phone. And there I am there as phone. So you can see two students in there. That'll let you see what the leaderboard looks like a little bit as we go. And you can see the student on the right over here sees who they're playing against. The teacher chooses when it starts and clicks start. Okay. Now at first I'll focus just on the, uh, the, the one on your screen here rather than my phone here. I'll come, come back and do that next. You can see uh, the timers going along the top up here. As a student, I could pause it. Okay, if I need to pause for some reason, I like that that feature is there, uh, and then go back in and play when I'm ready to. But that timer goes and changes to my score if I want it on. So he's squeezing lime on it. And because I have the settings on that tells them the correct answer, they see that prompt come up. There's the meme that I put in there. There's the scoring rank as I go. What's my favorite taco shell type? This one's a poll, so it's going to accept any answer I put in. Notice it says submitted instead of correct but it did give me points for answering it. Where did tacos most likely originate? Um, let's say a wrong answer. I'm gonna say Spain. Ooh, shows it in red, shows incorrect, and showed me the correct answer there as I went. Okay, what is this quiz mostly about? Um, tacos. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Let's see what happens. Ah, it said it was incorrect, and it showed me the correct answer was tacos with a C. So it's, it, that's an important thing to know about the fill-in-the-blank options, is if you didn't spell it just right, or if the teacher didn't add it as an option, uh, that incorrect spelling, it's going to mark it as wrong. Okay, which of the following are the most common ingredients in a taco? 
Um, it says select all that apply down here at the bottom. Let's say I say cheese and meat, but I leave off salsa, which I actually wanted them to select and see what happens. Okay, it says I'm incorrect and it showed what I was missing. So they have to get all of them in there to get that credit for it. And now my last question says, describe your favorite taco. And I'm gonna say a free one. <laughs> that would be my favorite taco. I'm gonna click submit. Now I've got the option of a power up here. Ooh, I got a power up to erase one of my correct answers. So it took an incorrect, I'm sorry, an incorrect answer. It powered me up and took away my first, uh, one of my incorrect answers. Which of these shows a taco? Here we go right here. Okay, question eight. What is typically the main ingredient in a taco? The meat. And question nine, what is the name for this equation? The quadratic formula. Now I see my redemption question, which remember I turned it on as a teacher. This lets me choose one of the questions I got wrong to redo. It's random which one the kid gets. Here's a question I got incorrect. Ah, now I remember from seeing it before, it was meat and cheese and salsa. And now I submit it and now that's gonna show as correct in my score there. Okay, and now it says I'm all done. It tells me what place I'm in, uh, rank one out of two. It tells me my score, it tells me my accuracy, it tells me how many I got correct, how many I got incorrect. It tells me my streak was five. I averaged 10.2 seconds a question, gives me lots of good data. Lists the questions below down here with my answers. Notice for the one that I got incorrect at first, it shows it as correct here. Okay, so I see everything down there. And again, as the teacher, you decide if you want that to happen or not. Now, let me go through and do this on the uh, on my phone. And let's pay attention to what we see on the teacher screen right here. We could see just one student has answered there. I normally, if I'm projecting this, turn on show only top five. That way any student who's struggling, their answers don't appear there. So let me go through as the student here on my phone. By the way, it looks great on my phone as well. Okay, there I go, you see me popping in there. Now, sometimes students get power-ups that can benefit each other, like a power-up that affects everybody. So that's a nice thing about when you're doing it simultaneously. Okay, I'm catching up. Ooh, I got a power-up. So that power up was one that affected the whole class. It gave everybody 50% more points for 25 seconds. Not gonna help the kid who's done. So that's a downside of, of doing them at different times. I'm gonna go soft corn. Ah, and we see now I have jumped into first place on my phone. And so that's, that's a fun thing that students can see up there and it motivates students to try it again to do, do this more and do better the next time. Okay, you can also see how close to done this student is, uh, as well as um, how, how many they've got in a row correct. So the student's got eight in a row correct. Now I'm gonna select, yeah, there we go. Okay, now on my phone, because I got all of the questions correct, I don't see a redemption question, nothing to redeem myself on. When all of your kids are done, you'll see this pop up here to award your normally first, second, and third place students. It'll also show everybody who performed above uh, mastery level, which I believe it considers to be 90%, and kind of parades them across the screen. I only had one in my class, so it only showed one there in those rankings. Normally, I should see three. One thing I don't like is that it automatically goes to this screen that shows the student's performance. It shows them ranked, so it normally only shows me my top few kids, but if you scroll down too far, you might end up embarrassing somebody, so it's something to be careful about. Notice that my poll and my open response questions show as 100%. That's an important thing to point out. I see some really great data up at the top here that I could share with the kids, what the accuracy was, uh, what question we struggled on, on, what question we took the longest on, maybe an interesting fact about the questions. Those are nice that I could see there. I could download my results as a spreadsheet if I want to. I can also grab a practice link right here to give to my kids to practice more if they want to, as well as assigning as practice from up here. Let's not do that yet though. One thing that I love in here is to go over to questions. 
look at the questions here. I see how long they took them on average and the pers or the correct incorrect numbers. And I like to sort by accuracy and scroll down to the bottom and focus on ones where we scored poorly on. And you could see they colored them green. We did good as a class on yellow. We were in between. And if we see red, that means less than 50% of us got it correct. So I'll often bring these up and show them to the kids. Now, the problem here is because I, I always put my first answer as the correct answer, that's the answer that it shows in there for the multiple choice. That's a thing to point out. I can also review the questions this way. And it shows the questions full screen like that. And it tells me how many kids answered what question. Makes it pretty obvious which one was the right answer. Also shows the right answer in green. Unless I click hide answers up here, then it uh, doesn't show it in green. It just shows who answered what. I see lots of good data here about how my students performed. I could see it by student. I could see it by question. I can go into the questions and look at them. Let's look here at my open-ended question. Notice when I click on it, I could see who answered what. But but I can't change whether, they, whether they're marked correct or not. So there's no grading option in here. When I click on my poll, I could see who, what, what answer got what number of uh, responses. But again, you, there's no grading option there and it shows them as correct. So if you look, for example, at, at the first version of me that did this, you see I've got a 77% when in reality, I only got five of the seven questions correct, which is like a 71%. That's The reason that's happening is because it's saying that I got these other two correct as well. So that throws off your data a little bit. I don't think it's a big deal, but it's there. Okay. Uh, so we talked about these highlights. We talked about the ability to add a sign as practice. We talked about the ability to play again. Well, actually, we didn't mention this, but I can click play again and it'll give the kids a new code to jump right back in and play it all over again, which I love to do. It's a great way for them to see those improvements uh, as they repeat the task that way. Two last things I want to show before we wrap this up. One is that if I click assign as practice up here, it's going to open this up to make a new assignment, uh, a, a practice assignment, an asynchronous assignment, which is what we're going to do in video three. So I'm not going to click on that right now. The other is under class accuracy where it says share a practice link. This is a little different. The link is already ready to go for us. It makes it a mastery challenge and challenges the students to score a 90% or above and gives me a link to send out to them. I can just grab that and post that in classroom or something like that. And they come back in here and practice until they get better at it. Okay. Lastly, when I click exit here, it'll take me back to my main screen. And when I look down in my main screen, the new screen that I want to pay attention to here is reports. So if I go down to reports, I could see that I just ran that right now. So here's the practice quiz that I just started by generating that link when I clicked on it. We're going to ignore that one. And we're going to look at my taco quiz right here. You can see there's those results again. Again, I can click on them and see what things they got correct and incorrect as I go down through it. I could even print them. I could sort them by score. I could sort them by first name, last name, or accuracy. And there's a difference between score and accuracy. Score is based off of the points they got, the speed they answered in, and maybe some of the power-ups they had. So I often sort by accuracy instead because that's what I'm interested in. My kids are interested in the score. I'm interested in their accuracy. Notice there's also an email to parent option. I don't typically do that, but that is an option that you have available there. And again, I can download these if I want to. A couple other tabs here. I can look at the questions here again. I saw this in the after test version, but I can always come back here and look at it. I can go to an overview which is nice to be able to formatively assess what questions I might need to reteach. And I could look at topics here. Now, I, my topics are not tagged because I'm in a free version of quizzes, not a paid version. Okay. And notice again, there's the option to assign this as practice right here and now. Okay, so that's video two of quiz of my coverage of quizzes. So in video one, we talked about how to make the quiz. In video two, we talked about how to launch it as a live game or test or team game. And in the next video, video three, we're gonna talk about how to launch it asynchronously. So we'll launch the same one as a practice that students can do. In future videos, I'll also talk about how to make these quizzes using a spreadsheet, and I'll talk about how to run a question uh, or run a quizzes that is a lesson instead of just a quiz. And maybe I'll even come back and show you how to add your own memes in quizzes because it's a really fun experience. So I hope you'll stay tuned for video three, which is how this works when you assign it asynchronously. Thanks for watching.